Hello everyone, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha and today I'm going to be doing quite the large book haul. In today's video, you are going to be seeing about 40 to 50 books that I have accumulated over the last three months. This is my quarter three book haul, but is also kind of doubling as a fall book haul because there are a lot of fall cozy reads within this. So hopefully you will get some recommendations from that as well. I have a lot of books to talk about today, so I'm not going to hesitate to go ahead and jump right into this. This is primarily going to be a book haul. I do have a couple of like coloring books that I'll also be sharing. But right before I get started, I do also want to point out that I have this cute new shirt on from my friend Caitlin from Pride and Paperback. And only she knows how much this means to me because I am a Lizzie McGuire super fan. That was my show as a kid. And honestly, I've rewatched the series multiple times as an adult as well as a movie. So to have a Lizzie McGuire shirt that says booked and busy just warms my heart. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the books. I have separated these into different genres and I'm not gonna spend too, too much time on each one just because like I said, there are almost 50 books here, but I hope you enjoy. I am gonna start with my smaller stacks of books and go up to my larger stacks. And I think you all will be surprised at what my two biggest genres are gonna be, or maybe you won't be, I don't know. But we're gonna go ahead and start with the smallest stack and that is Christian nonfiction. So I have three of these. The first one is Becoming Elizabeth Elliot by Ellen Vaughn. This was a revived book club pick a couple of months back. So I read this with my co-host then and we chatted about it. And I've actually decided to unhaul this book just because I don't feel like it was like a favorite of mine. I was appreciative of learning a little bit more about Jim and Elizabeth Elliot, but I think I liked what I knew about them before reading this book versus after reading it since the author seemed to take a little bit more somber of a tone and there's rumor that the author didn't really love Elizabeth Elliot that much to begin with so I have mixed feelings about this book so even though this is a book haul I'm actually unhauling this in the same video. Next up I have Adorning the Dark by Andrew Peterson. Thoughts on community, calling, and the mystery of making. I think this is also the same author that wrote the Wingfeather Saga. I'm particularly interested in reading this book because it deals with creativity as a Christian and also this is going to be Krista from Books and Jams Christian Read Along. I think it's in November so I'm glad to have this one. Then I have Unoffendable, How Just One Change Can Make All of Life Better by Brant Hansen. I have heard nothing but great things about this book and this author. I've heard that he is really funny, but he also deals with really deep topics. So I'm really excited to try him out and get into this one. The next stack is going to be middle grade books. The first one I have is Lightfall Book 3, The Dark Times. This is a really great middle grade fantasy graphic novel. If you have not already checked it out, I highly recommend it. It is a really sweet story about this girl and a Galdurian, which is a fantasy creature and the girl deals with a lot of anxiety. So it has really great mental health representation in this. And honestly, it just feels like a big adventure because that's what it is. I have been waiting for so long to continue in the series. So now that I finally have the third one, I can do so. Next up, I have another copy of The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett to add to my collection. So you may can see up here, I do collect different editions of The Secret Garden because it is my favorite children's classic. It just has such a special place in my heart. And this edition is really beautiful. It has a little bit of foiling on the cover and then the end pages look like this. And I don't think there's any illustrations throughout this one, but it is beautiful nonetheless. Then I have another graphic novel. This one is Peculiar Woods, The Mystery of the Intelligence by Andres J. Colmenares. This is book two in the Peculiar Woods graphic novel middle grade series. I really, really love this series. I think it's especially great if you are a fan of The Brave Little Toaster or if you like characters like Olaf from Frozen or anything like that. I just think this is such a fun series. So if you're looking for a little bit of whimsy and adventure, check this one out. And last but not least, I have Monster Tree by Sarah Allen. This is a spooky middle grade by an author that I've really enjoyed reading. This one follows our main character, Linus, and he is grieving the loss of his father. He has been an artist. He does a lot of charcoal work. He's actually colorblind. And so that is a really cool representation to have in this story. But he does a lot of charcoal art that is inspired by his father, but he hasn't really picked it up since his father has passed. But he and his mom have moved into this new house in this new neighborhood. And there's a tree in the backyard of his neighbor's house that is really creepy. And it seems like there might be some monsters coming from it. 
So this story does deal a lot with some spooky elements, but also grief and great friendship. So I highly recommend giving it a try if any of those things pique your interest. The next stack I have is going to be Cozy Mysteries. The first one is Farm to Trouble by Amanda Flower. This is the first in the Farm to Table Mystery Series. I love Amanda Flower's Magical Bookshop Mystery Series, and I also really enjoy the first book in her Amish Candy Shop series, which was Assaulted Caramel. So I knew I had to pick up another series by her. Not that I don't already have 100 Cozy Mystery Series to read, but I know that this is an author that I really love, and I don't really know what all this one is about, except that it takes place on a farm. There's gossipy neighbors and a shady investor, and obviously there's also gonna be a murderer on the loose. Next up, I have my friend Gwen's favorite cozy, and that is The Plot is Murder by V. M. Burns. So obviously I had to haul this book because it is my bestie Gwen's favorite cozy mystery, and so I do need to get to this one. I have been putting it off, but I think I'm really gonna like it because I tend to like bookish cozies, and this one is about an author, I believe. It takes place in the small town of North Harbor on the shores of Lake Michigan. It's surrounding a new mystery bookstore, but before the first customer can browse its shelves, the store owner is suspected of her own murder plot. Then I have A Doom Full of Sugar by Catherine Bruns. This is the first in the Maple Syrup Mysteries. Obviously, you can tell by this color that this is a fall series. I'm very excited to read this one. I hope that I'm able to get to it this fall, but if not, no worries. I have plenty of falls hopefully left in my life to read this sweet little book. It is about this girl who has to return home to her family's maple syrup farm. Her father has been murdered and she is trying to figure out what happened to him. Then I have The Whispered Word by Ellery Adams. This is book two in the Secret Book and Scone Society series. I really enjoyed the first book and so I had to get my hands on the second one. This one follows a group of women that have come together and shared in different tragedies or hardships that they've had in their life and they've created this Secret Book and Scone Society. The main character in the book, she owns a bookstore and she also has a little bit of a romance with the character in here as well, as is typical of a lot of cozy mysteries. But what I really love about this is it's a little bit less of a cozy mystery. It does still have a lot of the cozy mystery elements, but it does have some hard hitting elements as well as far as the depth of the characters and the stories. So if that sounds interesting to you, I think this is gonna be a winner of a series for me. I loved the first book, so definitely check this one out. I know I'm excited to continue. Then I have Death Checked Out by Leah Dobrinska. This is another fall cozy mystery that I'm so excited to read this fall. It follows a library director, and I think this one also may have some hard-hitting elements as well. Clearly, there is a murder that takes place, and I think this one also has some really great friendship stories as well, so I'm really excited to get to this one soon. Next up, I have Cherry Pie or Die by C.C. James. This is the first in a Baker Street mystery. I picked this book up because my friend Hannah has a book club called Comfy Cozy, and this was her book club pick for September, so I had to get my hands on this one. I have read it, and I do think it is a good cozy, and I could definitely recommend it if you enjoy clue-esque mysteries, things similar to Agatha Christie, but maybe not as hard to solve. For me, this one was a pretty simple one to solve. It's very easy to read and there are not too many words on a page, so you could probably read this in one sitting. It takes place on Baker Street and it follows our main character who gives historical tours around this Airbnb where she works alongside her aunt, Cecilia, who actually bakes for this Airbnb as well and it follows a murder that happens when they are on a historical ghost tour. And there are lots of really dramatic characters in this one. So if that sounds interesting to you, check out Cherry Pie or Die. Next up, I have a mystery slash thriller kind of stack. So the first one I have is another case of I am hauling this, but also unhauling this. And some of you may be surprised by this, but that is Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. I have read all of Riley Sager's books, or at least attempted to. I have had a few DNFs and this just so happened to be one of them. I got over a hundred pages. I'm not really sure where I stopped at this point, but I got quite a bit into this book and I just didn't find it to be very interesting. I was really bored and I ended up being told like kind of what happens at the end. And I think it was safe to say that this just wasn't gonna be the book for me either way. So I'm glad that I decided not to finish it and now I can pass it along to somebody who will hopefully enjoy it more than I did. The next book I have is, I'm not sure if it's like a cozy mystery or a regular mystery. I want to say it seems more like just a general mystery, but I have seen people talk about it as a cozy. So I will see when I read it, but that is How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. I'm very excited to get to this book. I've been wanting to get to it for so many months and I keep putting it off. Why do we do that? Every time we get books we really wanna read, I think it's because there's so many. I mean. I really want to read all these books that I'm hauling today, but there's just not enough hours in the day. So 
This book is following a girl named Frances Adams and she has always said that she'd be murdered and she was right. This book bounces back and forth between 1965 and present day. I think in one timeline we have a woman who knew that she was going to be murdered and she tries to solve her own murder before it happens but she doesn't and then we have the present day timeline where somebody is trying to figure out the mystery of this castle knoll that they are at where all of this stuff happened in the past. Next up, I have another mystery. Again, I think it's a general mystery, but it does seem to have some cozy elements, and that is The Antique Store Detective by Claire Chase. This is a completely unputdownable cozy murder mystery. So apparently it's a cozy, but I don't know. I will have to read. I have a different perception of what's cozy and what's not, but I love both of those genres. So if you do too, this might be one to pick up. This one follows our main character, Bella Winter. She loves vintage clothes, antiques, and solving crimes. I'm really excited about this one because I think it also includes some elements of treasure hunting, and it sounds like a good classic murder mystery, and I've not heard anybody talk about this one, so I'm really hoping to read this one before the end of the year. Speaking of classic murder mysteries, I have a couple of Agatha Christie books. The first one is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. And I have heard that this is one of Agatha Christie's best twists. So I am really looking forward to this one. I'm not sure exactly when I'll get to it, but I had to grab this coffee because I loved this cover. So I have this one. And then I also have Death on the Nile, which again, this is such a beautiful cover. I wanted to get these special like cloth bound editions of her primary three books that everybody seems to know and love. And that is Death on the Nile, The Murder on the Orient Express, and, and then there were none. So. I did start this one, but I haven't finished it yet. I had to put it down because I was getting a little bit bored. So I need to pick it back up soon. I feel like most people generally know who Agatha Christie is or what she writes. So I'm not gonna go into the synopsis of either of these, but I'm very happy to have them. And the last mystery or suspense novel that I have is Mind Games by Nancy Mill. This is the first in the Kaylee Quinn Profiler series. This is a Christian suspense novel. It may be romantic suspense, but I'm not entirely sure. I just know that this book follows FBI behavioral analyst Kaylee Quinn, and I believe she is the daughter of a serial killer. So I just thought that was a really cool element in a story. So I'm looking forward to reading this one. Okay, we are down to my two biggest stacks. The first one is fantasy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's more surprised, me or you, but I have really been in a fantasy mood lately. I think it's just part of the fall season too, but there have been so many that I've been really excited to get to. So the first one on my stack is actually on my October TBR, and that is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. I noticed that this author was coming out with a new book called The Otherware Post, and I was like, I really want to read this one, even though I don't think they're connected. I just wanted to know if this one was good or not, and I love that it is about this traveling hotel and these sisters that really, really, really want to go there, but they can't afford it. So they start working there, but when they get inside, they realize that things are not as they seem. So this sounds super good. And I have a friend who absolutely loves this book and it's one of her favorites of all time. So I'm really hoping that I enjoy it. Next up, I have One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. This book has been on and off my TBR for the past couple of years, ever since I read Belladonna by Adeline Grace. And I heard about this one. I was like, oh my goodness, this is another gothic romantic. I've really fallen in love with this genre, but it has to be done right. I tend to be a little bit more picky. I don't like a lot of steamy scenes or smut. I don't like a lot of world building. So it's hard for me to find fantasy that I enjoy, but I've heard this one is really, really good. Like I'm pretty sure I haven't heard a bad thing about it. It's about this girl named Elspeth, and I believe she has a monster living inside her head. There's also this dark mist that is going over this kingdom, and I believe it is up to her as well as possibly her love interest to save it. Next up, I have The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. This is another book that I have equally heard not many people talk about, but then the people that I've heard talk about it have loved it. So this is the first, I believe, in a trilogy, and it follows this girl. She's 17 years old, and she has spent her last 10 years fighting for survival in the notorious death prison called Zandalov. Zalendov, wow, <laughs> working as a prison healer. So there is a rebel queen who is captured and she is tasked with healing her so the rebel queen can compete in these trials. But the thing about these trials is that they are deadly. Nobody has ever escaped them. So the main character decides to take the place of the queen and go into these trials. And I think there's also romance in this one. That's the thing I love. I need romanticy books. So if you have any more romanticy recommendations that are clean or like really low spice, let me know. Another romanticy book is Beneath These Cursed Stars by Lexi Ryan. This is a spinoff series to the original duology that this author wrote. The first one being These Hollow Vows. 
I gave these hollow vowels and these twisted bonds both four stars and I really loved them and was so excited to pick up Beneath These Cursed Stars. However, I will say if you, first of all, if you haven't read the first duology, don't pick this one up because you're going to be absolutely lost. Second of all, just don't pick this one up because <laughs> I gave it two stars. I was very disappointed. It felt very disjointed and all over the place and I really wanted to love it, but it was just a miss for me. So I'm probably going to end up unhauling this one too. Speaking of disappointments, some of y'all are going to come at me, but remember who probably told you about this series or who has been raving about the series for the past couple of years. This is Osteria by Adeline Grace. And I did still give this book, what did I give it? Three and a half stars, but I will say it's my least favorite book in the Belladonna series. I still highly recommend checking out this Gothic romantic YA series. It is so, so special to me. It has such a special place in my heart. I absolutely love it. It has really helped me to dive more into fantasy books that I know I'll enjoy, but I will say that at the end of this series, I did start to notice more plot holes that I wasn't noticing before, and I noticed that really what this has going for it is the atmosphere and the romance, but as far as the plot goes, I just got lost a little bit, or I was left wanting more, and so this wasn't my favorite in the series, but I am still happy to have the third book in the Belladonna series. I absolutely love them all. And they're so beautiful. If you get the first editions, they have this under the dust jacket, beautiful artwork. So I highly recommend still checking it out. I'm just saying this one is a little disappointing for me. But flipping it around a little bit, this is a little bit of a spoiler for my upcoming wrap up, but I recently read and hauled Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Marr. This is a book that two of my besties absolutely love. And this was actually a book club pick this month as well for Jordan's Patreon from Jordan and Lane. And so I finally was able to pick this up and I was nervous about it because this is another book that has gone on and off of my TBR for so long. And I just wasn't sure if I should read it or not. I was really excited about it. I remember like before it was really heavily talked about. It was probably heavily talked about on TikTok, but before it took the world by storm, I knew about it. I was really wanting to read it. And then after a while, I was like, I don't read a lot of fantasy books. So I just need to take them off my TBR. And now here we are. I've given this book five stars and spoiler alert, I'm in my second read of it after finishing it. So I don't do this a lot. This has happened twice to me this year. So I really, really love this book. It is a cozy fantasy that is very reminiscent of Ella Enchanted meets The Office. So if that sounds good to you, maybe check this one out. It doesn't take itself too seriously. So don't go into it thinking that you're going to get like a really serious fantasy story. It is very like low stakes, cozy, kind of a little bit of slice of life, but following two characters that I absolutely love. You have Evie, who is just this big ray of sunshine, and she is the assistant to the villain. And the villain may not seem as villainous as you think he should. I find him to be a very morally great character, and I love those. Then I have Twin Crowns by Katherine Doyle and Katherine Weber. This I'm so excited about because I've heard nobody talk about this series, which I hope doesn't mean bad things, but there's a few books out in this series and I really want to read it. It is a Y fantasy and it follows these twin sisters. One of them I think is a little bit more of like a gruff warrior and the other one is more like girly princessy and I'm assuming they're going to be fighting for a crown here. But other than that, I don't really know a lot about it. I know there's going to be some romance in it as well. I don't know, something about it just really intrigues me. So I'm really excited for this one. Then I have a Christian fantasy called Mortal Queens by Victoria McCombs. I've been wanting this book all year, like for the past, maybe a little bit over a year. And I'm so excited to finally have this one. I don't remember a lot about this book, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. It is a fae fantasy, which I think that's really, really cool. It's about, I think these people that are chosen to be mortal queens for the fae, but now the queens have started to disappear. So this new girl is picked and she is trying to survive this. And I think there also may end up being a romance potentially with a fae king. And the last on this stack is going to be more of a dystopian or sci-fi book, but I just didn't have a stack for that. So it got thrown in with fantasy because they tend to be similar in some regard, not always, but this one is called The Nightmare Virus by Nadine Brandes. This is a Christian sci-fi dystopian fantasy question mark, but it follows this world where there's this technology that has been invented where you can like have these different dreams or something like that. Um, it's a dream technology, it goes wrong, and a virus spreads across the globe, trapping people in a universal dreamscape that they call the nightmare virus. So now you have this character who is trying to find a cure, and I think there's also going to be some like gladiator things that go on within this nightmare. So 
I don't know about it, but I'm like so intrigued. I don't like, I don't know that if you told me this has gladiator elements that it would just be like something I would run to, but for whatever reason it is right now. And I'm really pumped for it. And the last stack before I get to my coloring books at the very end is going to be romance. Y'all, this is my romance year. I have found some romances that I've loved over the past couple of years, but this year is definitely the year that I have found so many clean romance book recommendations that I've been itching to try out. I found some new favorite authors and I'm so excited to share these books with you. So let me go ahead and get started. Before I get into like the clean ones, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you all that I bought these two books because you know, obvious reasons the movie came out. So I have It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. I did read both of these books already and I reread them and tabbed them. And I do think they are very impactful reads. They do definitely both have some triggers that I would check before you even consider picking them up. This heavily revolves around domestic violence or domestic relationships. There's also some open door scenes and there's some language in these books. And those are all things that I typically avoid, but I will say that Colleen Hoover did such a great job of representing what these types of relationships look like. And I really, really loved them. So that's those. But now let's jump into my other ones. I have a couple that are a little bit different because they have a little bit of a historical spin. So I'll go to those first. The first one is a Christian historical romance with time travel, I think. And so that is When the Day Comes by Gabrielle Meyer. This is the first book in the Timeless series. And again, I have heard nothing but good things about this series. So it follows our main character. Her name is Libby and she has been given a powerful gift. She lives one life in 1774 Colonial Williamsburg and the other in 1914 Gilded Age New York City. But after going back and forth in these timelines, I think she wakes up in a different place every day. But once she turns, I think it may be 21, yeah, on her 21st birthday, she has to choose one path and forfeit the other. But how can she choose when she has so much to lose in each life? Does that not sound like such a great time, but also like it's going to rip your heart out? Because, I mean, it just sounds so good. I'm ready for it. Like, I mean, rip my heart out and stomp it to shreds. I don't even care. I am so ready. The next Christian historical romance is going to be Beyond Ivy Walls by Rachel Fordham. I read The Letter Tree by this author earlier this year. It was actually my first book that I read this year and my first five-star read. So I had to pick up Beyond Ivy Walls. This is set in Iowa in 1903, and it is very reminiscent of Beauty and the Beast. It follows a recluse and a young woman who discover that the scars of life are no match against an act of love. Another book that I've hauled and already read is The Summer of Yes by Courtney Walsh. I did tab this one and this book holds a very special place in my heart because I got to read this with a few of my best friends who I met up with this summer and we did an in-person book club on this book. So this one is always going to be very special to me. It is a five-star read, but it is a little bit less of a romance and more of a kind of chick lit story that has some really good life lessons. So I would recommend you not going into this for the romance elements. While there are some in there, they are a little insta lovey or a little bit sporadic, but I want you to go into this more or less because this is just a great story with so many good life lessons. And I don't know, it just made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me feel all the feels. I'm going to combine all these into the next little, little segment here because I actually, where's the first one? I guess I've had the first one for a little bit, but I have gotten into two different series at the same time because they overlap. And so that is the Sweater Weather series and the Appy's Hockey Romance series. These series are written by multiple different authors. And the first one that I wanna talk about is the Sweater Weather series. So this is written by, I think seven different authors. And this is going to be, I think book two. This is book two, right? Yeah. This is book two in the series. The first one is Just Don't Fall by Emma St. Clair, which I really loved. And this one is called The Fallback Plan by Melanie Jacobson. You don't have to read these books in order. They're just all set in Harvest Hollow. And so they kind of intertwine a little bit, but I mean, you know that everybody's gonna end up together in these books. So you're really not spoiling yourself that much. This book is following the bad boy and the golden girl, but they've kind of traded places. So you have Jolie McGraw who has just come back home after 10 years to Harvest Hollow and she's opening a new bar. And then she runs into a guy that is her former star of her teenage stress dreams. That is a weird sentence. The former star of my teenage stress dreams. Luke, Lucas Cole. Wow. Words are hard. Um, he's now a sheriff, police officer. Yeah. 
This is a short book and it just sounds really cute. That's really all I'm going to say about it. I, I want to continue in the Sweater Weather series. So I have this one and then I have the third book, which is Can't Help Falling by Courtney Walsh. My girl, Courtney Walsh. So you know I'm excited about this one. And this one is, is a firefighter romance. I've never read a firefighter romance. So it says, sometimes all it takes to start a fire is a single match. Owen Larrabee is not my soulmate. He wasn't when I confessed my love to him on his wedding day. And he isn't now. Uh-oh, sounds like drama. I should probably say that I wasn't the bride when that happened. I don't have the best timing. He got a temper, he's moody, and he has a history of being misunderstood and making big mistakes. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm not reading any more of the synopsis, but Courtney Walsh, drama. Oh my goodness. But it won't be like heavy drama because her books, they don't have third act breakups. They're always sweet and clean and fun. And there's not typically like, I mean, there's some angst, but like, you know, you're, you are in for a good time here and not a lot of like hard stuff because life is hard. Why should your books be? Okay, then this is where it gets a little confusing. So Just Don't Fall by Emma St. Clair is the first book in the Sweater Weather series, but it's also the first book in the Appy's Hockey Romance series. So I do have some of those and some of those and like the covers just are mixed up, okay? So I don't even know how to do this. Um, this is the seventh book in the Sweater Weather series, but it is the second book in the Appy's Hockey Romance series. And this is Absolutely Not In Love by Jenny Proctor. I'm very excited about this one because it follows Felix and Felix has his own library that he loves so much. And it's it has a name. I don't remember what his library's name is, but he has a neighbor who also loves books, but she doesn't love hockey and he's a hockey player. So I'm really excited to get their story. So that is again, the seventh book in the Sweater Weather series and the second book in the Appy series. And then I also have a couple other books in the Appy series. Um, I think this is the third book, A Groom of One's Own by Emma St. Clair. And this one says he always dreamed of getting married, but for love, not for deportation or not to avoid deportation. So this is a hockey player who is risking getting deported. So he has to get married. So it's arranged marriage. I don't know if I'm gonna like that, but I love Emma St. Clair's writing and I feel like, I mean, I like hockey romance too. So it's gonna be a good time. And then I think this is the most recent, maybe, I don't think this is the next one in the series. It's the most recent one in the hockey series. It's Runaway, Bride, and Prejudice, also by Emma St. Clair. There's one rule smart hockey players know not to break. Never, and I mean never, date the coach's daughter. But no one ever accused Van of being smart. I'm just excited, okay? Like, I, I like don't need to know anything. I'm just excited about all these books because I love both of these series, even though I've only read one book that encompasses both of the series. Um, clearly, I just wanted to collect them all and read them all. Will I get to them all this year? Probably not, but like, I'm excited. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say I'm excited about these books, but I mean, like, if you're watching, you get it. You know, like, you understand that we just get excited about books. So, next up is Love and Other Goals by Tracy Bach, or Back. there's two A's. I'm really not sure how to pronounce her last name, but this is, again, I don't know if I've mentioned this, all these books that I've mentioned so far, after I mentioned these because these are not clean. They've been, they are like clean or closed door romances because that's what I read. But this is a sports romance and obviously it's soccer. Lana Grant's goal is too important to risk failing. So she's formulated an ironclad plan to get to where she wants to be, changing the world as an immigration lawyer, just like her mother. But I think this guy, Mateo, he's going to get in the way of that. She's going to fall in love and her plans are probably not going to look like what she thought. So I really want to read this one because it takes place, I think, on a college campus. There's also some college ministry settings. So I think this is even maybe a Christian romance because they do talk a lot about college ministry, which is a huge part of my five years that I spent in college was ministry. So I'm really excited for this one. And also my husband was a soccer player when we were in high school. And so I just really feel like this is going to be my kind of book. Next up, I have The Best Friends Playlist by Jessica King. I've been really excited for this one too. This is a Pine Lakes Lovers novel. I'm in love with my best friend. The problem, he doesn't love me back. Five years ago on the night of our high school graduation, I handed Jordan my heart and he handed me a country song's worth of heartbreak and rejection. Now after returning to my hometown for an internship, I find that despite my delusional fantasies, Jordan's feelings remain the same. I'm still Buddy Buddy Paige. The only thing that's changed is that my friend zone membership has been upgraded to platinum level. But just as I'm making Adele's Someone Like You my personal anthem, my life gets a miraculous facelift. I get a chance at my dream job and a potential new boyfriend all in one week. 
Sounds like the perfect way to get over Jordan, right? Wrong. Jordan starts acting weird. Jordan likes her. <laughs> so this sounds like drama too. The Best Friends Playlist is a friends to lovers romantic comedy filled with playful banter, endearing characters, and swoony moments that will make your heart squeal with happiness. It's a closed door romance book with all the chemistry and without any language or explicit scenes. Kissing only. Just how I like it. <laughs> We are almost done, you guys. I only have like five or six more books left, but the next one is The Golden Goal by Anna Conwell. Did I mention I'm really digging some hockey romances lately? <laughs> so this one follows the Alabama Rockets, and this one says, Shaw Daniels is the bane of my existence. Always has been, always will be. When we were kids, he annoyed me to no end by being good at everything. He didn't have to study or really even try. Meanwhile, I tried too much and still lost to him. Then when we were teenagers, our rivalry became twisted. He started sabotaging all my relationships. I retaliated by doing the same to him. Now we're adults and we should be able to move on. But when I become a physical therapist for his professional hockey team, it seems as though we can't let go of our rival tendencies. Suddenly our teasing starts to border on flirting. Bets are made and lines are crossed. The kind of lines that once crossed, you can never go back to the way things were before. The Golden Goal is an enemies to lovers, brother's best friend. I love brother's best friend. Hockey rom-com for fans of sports romance. It has all the sizzling chemistry you love without any explicit scenes. I do think this is a book that is in a standalone series with four men and four different sports, but I mean, I had to read the hockey one. Also, I've never seen a hockey game in my life, so why on earth I love hockey romances as much as I do is beyond me. But what I do know that I love is boy bands. <laughs> so I have Once Upon a Boy Band by Jenny Proctor. I saw the cover of this book and I was like, sign me up. Give me all the boy bands, all the heartthrobs, like I'm here for it. Once upon a time, she slept with his poster beside her bed. Don't tell me you've never done that because I teetotally, yes, I said teetotally, I'm aging myself. I had, I'm also aging myself here, a Jesse McCartney poster hanging not beside, above my bed. So every night when I went to bed, I could see him. <laughs> so this is gonna be, this is gonna be so good for me. Um, okay, so now he's all grown up, hiding behind a burly beard and lots of flannel, and she doesn't have a clue. So I think this main guy, I think his name was Deke when he was with the band, he ends up going to this vet office. There's dogs here, she's the vet. And she doesn't recognize him as being like her childhood heartthrob because of his beard, which I mean like I would be keeping up with you, but I think he went off the grid. <laughs> I sound like such a stalker. Um, I think he went off the grid and so maybe that's why, but I think they're gonna strike up a romance and I'm just real excited about it. And then I have, I think this is a Christian, so not just a clean rom-com, but a Christian romance called Truth is a Whisper by Mandy Blake. This is the first in the Wolf Creek Ranch series. My friend Caitlin from Pride and Paperback has raved about this book so much and so I needed to get it and read it and thank you Caitlin for getting this for me because she did get this for me. Um, also, I have not mentioned this and it is not because I don't love you all, but there's so many books. I got so many of these books for my birthday this past month. So I just wanted to go ahead and insert here a thank you to everybody who has gifted me a book or a present or anything. I swear this has been like the most loved I have felt on my birthday in my years of bookstagram. Like you people are seriously some of the best people on this planet. This is the best community ever. You all are just so loving and kind and I do not deserve your kindness and your love as much as you give it, but I appreciate you all so, so much. So Caitlin did give this to me, but this is, like I said, a cowboy romance. I've never read a cowboy romance. Can you believe it? I grew up in like redneck Tennessee, I'm telling you guys. And I've never read a cowboy romance. I don't know what's wrong with me. But I don't remember really what this one's about. And I've been reading a lot of synopses and I've been sitting here for probably 30 minutes and I'm just really tired. So we're not gonna read this one, but it's gonna be a good one. The next one is Pumpkin Everything by Beth Labonte. This is a sweet fall romance that was turned into a Hallmark movie. So guess who's gonna read the book and watch the Hallmark movie? This girl. So this is about a girl who, she is a horror novelist and she has writer's block, but not only that, her grandfather has just gotten into a car accident and so she's coming back home to help take care of him. And she runs into this guy, I think, yeah. Kit Parker, her childhood best friend, first love, and the entire reason for her skipping town in the first place. So it's also short and I'm excited for this one. I'm excited for all these books. I'm so glad we're not playing a drinking game on how many times I say I'm excited because that would not be good. All right, then I have Just Look Up by Courtney Walsh. This is my first backlist, Courtney Walsh. I am both excited 
and nervous because I don't know what her backlist is going to be like. So before she wrote like Christian rom-coms or like what she's been writing in recent years, she wrote, I think, Christian romance. And I think that's what this is. So I am excited, but I am nervous. Maybe what she's looking for is right in front of her. If only she just look up. Oh man, that sounds real sappy. <laughs> I don't remember what this is about. But I do think that it seems like every book I pick up is like a reunion of sorts, a coming back home of sorts, um, a friends to lovers or something like that. That's probably what this is because it seems to be like every other book I pick up. And the last book, we're finally here, y'all. The last book that I have is Memory Lane by Becky Wade. This is the first in the Sons of Scandal series. I think this is a like standalone series so you can read the books individually, but I am a tried and true read the first book and then go and order girl. So that's what I'm going to do with this one if I like it. I think this is a Christian romance. If anything, it's clean. Becky Wade loves writing emotional contemporary romances. Okay, so maybe not Christian, but I feel like it was. Maybe it's just clean. I don't know. But it says, after surviving a trauma several years back, Remy Reed relocated to a cottage on one of Maine's most remote islands. She's arranged her life just the way she wants it, spending her time working on her wood sculptures and soaking in the beauty of nature. It's quiet and solitary until the day she spots something bobbing in the ocean. Her binoculars reveal to something to be a man, and he's struggling to keep his head above water. She races out to save him and brings him into her home. He's injured, which doesn't detract from his handsomeness, nor make him any easier to bear. He acts like a duke who's misplaced his dukedom. Expensive taste, lazy charm, bossy ideas. Remy would love nothing more than to return him to his people, but he has no recollection of his life prior to the moment she rescued him. Though she's not interested in relationships other than the safe one she's already established, she begins to realize that he's coming to depend on her. Who is he? What happened that landed him in the Atlantic Ocean? And why is she drawn to him more and more as time goes by? There's no way to discover those answers except to walk beside him down memory lane. Well, that sounds adorable. I don't know if I like it, but I mean, I love the amnesia trope, so we'll, we'll see, but it sounds like a good time. Real quick, before we wrap it up, I'm obsessed with um, Coco Y.O. coloring books, like I'm sure everybody else here on the internet is, but I had to share because I got a few new ones. So I have the Cozy and Cute Bold Easy Coloring Book. So there, here's a couple things. There's a coffee shop, Cozy Vibes, Butter, Toast. Yeah, okay, so all kinds of fun coloring books in this one. And then I have a couple of spooky ones. So I have the spooky cute, spooky cutie. I've been saying spooky cute. It's spooky cutie. Huh? Who knew? Spooky cutie coloring book and the little spooky coloring book. These are both also by Coco Wyo. And I'm very excited to color these. I just feel like I need to take time off of doing everything else and only color these books because they just look amazing. And if you are curious what I use to color these with, I use the Ohuhu markers that you can get from Amazon. They are alcohol based, but they do come with like a little sleeve that you can put behind your coloring pages because these are all one sided. You put it behind there. And when you do that, it doesn't like bleed through. I mean, it'll bleed through on this page, which is why they're only one sided, but it's not gonna bleed onto your next page. And I just think they color the most smooth and amazing. Also, I got sent this book this month and I just had to share this too. This is a color and solve book called Haunted High Rise. Color the crime scene, analyze the clues, and solve the murder mystery. So I'll just give you a little bit of an example. The first one in here is called An Old Fashioned Murder. And then you have a little murder mystery that you read and a question that you have to answer. So you color this scene and as you color, you pay attention to clues and try to solve the mystery. This sounded just like two of my favorite things. All right, my friends, that is all the books. Like I said, I had upwards of like 40 something books, almost 50 books to share with you all. I hope that you enjoyed this haul and maybe learned about some new books that you wanted to add to your TBR. If you made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave me a shopping emoji or a money bags emoji. I did not buy all of these books, thankfully. Um, a lot of them were gifted to me. And again, I appreciate those of you who gifted me books so, so much because you are absolutely wonderful people and you know the way to my heart. But also, this is a lot of money's worth of books. I'm just saying. So shopping carts, shopping carts. Is there a shopping cart emoji? Shopping bag <laughs> and money bag emojis or what I'm looking for. So if you have nothing else to say, you can leave those in the comments for support, but I appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye friends.